Chainmail. The ongoing adventures of the Broman Empire. That's these guys right here from Broholm. To refresh your memory of the strategic situation, we've got the Bromans have launched a full-scale assault on the lands of the Orcs up here to the north. They are trying to gain, and I've been mispronouncing it, they're looking for the girdle of Vince McMaximus. He's a character in the Trollopolis AD&D campaign that some buddies of mine are running. This bro home, this takes place like a thousand years in the future. So there's no way that the characters from that campaign will appear in bro home unless, like, magic is involved. And this being D&D, it's, it's entirely possible. It's not really a campaign. It's a series of campaigns. It's kind of a Trollopolis megaverse at this point. What you need to know for today is that the, the forces of humanity are trying to liberate this all-important artifact. It's a golden girdle, the kind that a champion might wear. See, Vince McMaximus? I mean, if you don't get it, then I just I don't know what to tell you. Today, we're going to be looking at the battle of Baron Elizabeth Farm. That battle is going to be taking place over here in the eastern part of the empire. A diversionary force was sent north here in the east... And they have met, so to their surprise, they met a orc force heading south. We laid out a battle that looks a little bit like this. See if we can get the lighting up just a little bit better. And interestingly, the reason we love these map-based campaigns is because they generate battles that you might not on your own. The Bromans are going to be coming in from the southeast corner of the map. You see the woods in the woods? The orcs, realizing that what the Bromans were doing was heading up to Baron Elizabeth Farm to restock and resupply, have opted to head them off at the pass. What they didn't realize is that the light horse would be sent out ahead of the main body of troops. So here at Baron Elizabeth Farm, we're going to have a, few, a small unit of light horse that's ready. Now, we learned after the last scenario that the light horse are better used after the battle in mop-up duty. So they may not come out unless there's a way to kind of tip the balance of the scales to lead to a total, you know, party wipe for the part of the orcs. One thing I should point out to you guys, we have the best comments section on YouTube down below. The way we play chainmail, if you're coming here from a D&D background, understand that you've been doing it wrong for 40 years. You come up with a story, and then for you, the game is, how do I force the dice to conform to my story? You see, you write a fairy tale, and then you try to cram the real world to fit your fairy tale. You got it backwards, guys. The reason you're always looking for advice with your D&D &D is because you're supposed to use fairy tales to help explain and understand what happens in the real world. That's how we do things here in the House of Wargaming. We are going to play, we roll the dice, and we move our mice, and then we tell a story to explain what just happened. You probably have a lot of ideas that would make this battle go so much better. Forget about it. The battle is going to happen the way the battle happens, and when we're done, we'll sit down and fit that battle into the larger campaign. You see, I don't understand why you've got a Baron Elizabeth in an empire of bros. Well, the answer is, ah, not obvious until you realize, look, the dice and the universe generated this. Well, wait a minute. Baron Elizabeth is not in the Empire. She's here in the White Heart Woods, which is a kind of, you know, call it a lint trap for all the undesirables, from the Broman perspective, all the ne'er-do-wells who can't live, who chafe under the glorious rule of the patriarchy, they run up north. So I'm anticipating now that the way to interpret what's happened is that the White Heart Wood is kind of a, a what, what would you call it? It's... it's Perhaps a borderland, perhaps the kind of borderland that would have a keep on it, where independent barons run off to make a name for themselves, where orc bands and parties who don't fit into orcish society head south and have roving bands of bandits, that it's kind of a, it's not a particularly safe place, it's kind of dangerous, but it makes a good buffer state between two large empires, you see? Buffer states are good things. You want to have a buffer state between two large empires because if they're bordering each other, like right next to each other, point and gun, it's a lot more likely that they'll go to war. See how we use the fairy tales to help us understand what's going on in the real world? 
See how we use them to explain what's going on? So just bear that in mind, that we don't have a story in this. We're going we're gonna to play out the battle, and then we'll figure out how to incorporate this battle into the campaign. Speaking of, let's set up some terrain. What do you say? Once again, here is our battlefield. Remember, the map is not the territory. This gives us a good idea what the battlefield is going to look like. This is what the battlefield looks like. We have a couple of hills over here. We've got light woods here and here. Those are heavy woods. And we got a stream that costs three inches to cross. Also, the stream and all of the light woods prevent charges, which means normally in chainmail, when a cavalry unit charges somebody else, they have to make a morale check, that charged unit, in order to stand their ground. That's not true for any charges that take place in light woods or hills. Now, the heavy woods are no-go zones for the cavalry. They cannot pass through the heavy woods. Um, anybody can cross this stream. Cavalry can attack across it, but they don't get the benefit of that extra morale check. We do need to roll for initiative, but before we do, let's take a look at the strategic map one more time. We are fighting this battle, as is so often the case, on the edge of two maps. We'll get as, as close as we can there. So there's our battle of Baron Elizabeth Farm right here. And this is a very important battle. Even though it's far away from where the girdle of Vince McMaximus is, if the Bromans handily win this, it's going to draw the Great Khan from his center point. He's going to have to come over to shore up the defenses on the eastern side of the empire. That's going to give the Bromans a free hand over here in the west. On the other hand... If the orcs handily win, they're going to be able to sweep down and start rampaging along the Broholm Blagton Pineland Road. In fact, he may send his horses down to trash Dunberg or Vinovium, right? So this is a much more important battle that will have great effect on the campaign itself. Bear that in mind. Our two forces today are led by General Guest, is the guy in charge of the Bromans, and War Chief Scar is trying to make do, uh, is trying to do his con proud. One other thing to mention, I've set the figures up on the table already, they don't. They start the battle off board. We're slowly trickling forces in Gettysburg style, and to find out who goes first, we're going to roll for initiative. Obviously, the Greenskins are the green die, and obviously, as is our tradition here in the House of Wargaming, our first initiative roll will come up as a tie. And this time the Bromans get it. So the locations for, the starting locations are already set. Last week we decided where these forces were coming in from. That's where these forces come in, but because they're starting on the edge of the map, they are starting in column. And we're going to have to take a look at movement rates for each of these units to figure out how they come in. As usual, we are playing at half scale because we've got just a regular folding table for our battle. And um, the Bromans are going to say, yeah, you know what I want? I want to go first. I want to start tearing things up. So the first thing they're going to do is move their light infantry who have a movement of four and a half inches. They're going to, they're going to pivot and they're going to get into these woods. Now that pivot costs them, uh, because it's less than 45 degrees, that will cost them a quarter of their move, and they will still have three inches of movement left to them. So they're going to pivot off that way. The rest of these guys, we got to start measuring from the edge of the table. The archers down here also have a four and a half inch move. They are in columns, so they can come in four and a half inches, and we'll send them in at a nice long angle, and we'll send them over kind of in that direction. But in order for them to change face, or change formation, that's going to take a full turn. The light horse you see right here have a movement of, I'm sorry, these are medium horse. They have a movement of 9 inches, and we'll get them up, run, do we send them up running interference? Our light cavalry, we're going to race around behind here, and they can come in a full 12 inches. Or, but they, but bear in mind the light cavalry, tell you what we'll do. Formation changes cost half a move for the light cavalry. So we will move these guys up six inches to here, and then we'll pivot them 45 degrees. 
which costs them an inch and a half, and they can move another inch and a half like so in column. Our light infantry, light cavalry can move six inches. Which and we come out of it. turn one looking a little something like this. The medium foot, I keep saying that wrong. Gary Gygax specifies they are heavy foot. We do not have any elite foot, what do we call armored foot on the table this time around. It's just heavy foot and heavy foot. They have a movement of four and a half inches. Each team can only bring eight guys on. You can see the cavalry are making a big sweep around this direction for the orcs, and the cavalry have the same idea for the humans coming up around this way. Uh, because they have a movement speed of four, we can only get eight guys on the board for each of these forces. And now the question is going to be, do we treat these as eight and eight, or do you wait and bring everybody on to have one big formation? Let's find out after rolling for initiative. One for the orcs, and there's another tie. Ain't that something? Three and three. Somebody's trying to tell me something. Finally, the Bromans get the initiative. They get to go first, so they say, yeah, you know what? I am inclined to bring everybody on the board. Four and a half inches brings this whole unit on the board in column, like so. They have a fairly secure flank, so they will be able to spend the next turn turning, and they're going to get the jump. Then we got to move everybody else. I'll be right back. As you can see, it looks like we're headed for a big cavalry fight over here in the woods where the Bromans have the advantage. Everyone is also playing fairly conservative, bringing everybody on board. For turn number three, let's see who gets to dictate things. And once again, it's the Bromans. And the Bromans are going to take a full turn to turn 90 degrees. Like so. The archers will also take up position. And the horses over here, I think we have to move our, our light horse are going to come across and form line, a little something like that. The light infantry have taken these woods, they're safe from the cavalry, and the question then becomes, what are we going to do with the foot troops over here? I think we will turn these guys 90 degrees, that's a full move. We'll also do a formation change here for those orcs, and these orcs will also turn to face. So nothing too, nothing too shocking here. We're just lining up for a big mass battle on this side. At the end of turn number three, everybody has moved. The light horse are having a grand old time over in the woods, as are the medium horse the advantage in numbers goes to the Bromans over here. They have one extra stand of medium horse who are now well rested. Everybody else has three exhaustion markers, uh, with the exception of these guys. And now those, yeah, they moved up a little bit too. So once again, we're going to roll. And this time the orcs have the advantage. And the orcs say, you know what? We're going to go ahead and uh, move up three inches here. And that's probably far enough, because we want, the orcs want to resolve this battle over here before they do anything else. Uh, and let me just shuffle those guys up. And to do that, well, maybe they don't. Maybe they're perfectly happy bringing up a blocking force, something like this, and then they'll bring their archers up four and a half inches to there. And we may have a bit of an archer battle, but they'll rest their horses so that this fight, when it happens, remember, when you climb that hill, it costs two exhaustion. For their part, the Bromans are, ooh, do they, do they force the issue over here? They're going to rest all of their horses as well. We're going to wait and have a fresh fight over there, but... The archers don't care about being tired at all. They're going to move up a full four and a half inches. And do we force the issue here? We can charge them. Oh, they're rested. They got to rest too. You have to, you have to match like for like, right? You don't want to be exhausted and fighting his light foot, even with the advantage of numbers. The next question is, hey, what about this archer duel? Are these guys in range? They have a range of seven and a half inches. And I think they are, they're six, seven and a half. I think they're just out of range. It's going to take one more move. Who's going to get to decide first? We have a tie for initiative. 
There you go. The Bromans with a six to four are going to get to call the shots now. And rested, rested. The only guys they have that are that have any exhaustion are these light foot who aren't really that exhausted at all. If they opt not to move, they get a second shot. Do they have a shot over here? That's seven inches. An inch and a half is the stream, and they are not close to the stream, so they can't even shoot those horses over there. Uh, we're going to leave these archers. Mm. We're going to pivot them like this. And that's it. Now, and that for, for a very important reason, if these guys want to move up, they're going to take some bow shots. Meanwhile, we're going to bring our... Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, still out of bow shot range. And then we'll bring our heavy foot up their usual... Well, they can charge six inches. So we're going to bring them up three inches. The trick there is they want to stay out of bow shot range of these guys. So they can only really come up to here. And then they have to wait. So they're they're not going to move at all. The smart play here is to have these archers move up. They're three inches. They're going to pivot. And they're going to move up, you know, about an inch or two. That leaves them out of range of these archers. If they move up, these archers will get two bow shots, and they'll do six to eight damage this turn, which will effectively wipe out those archers. These archers being over here are going to force these guys, these orcs' cavalry, to move and react and do something. They're immune to being charged, which is good. Otherwise, if we don't do that, this becomes a stalemate where nobody really wants to move. Then we're going to go ahead and bite the bullet, and we're going to move these guys up five inches. They are outside of charge range, but that forces the orcs to adopt. Now, the orcish bowmen here, we will rule that they can use their first fire. They're not going to move, so they are going to launch at our half-armored guys, and with eight shooting, they are going to do two casualties with a possibility on a four through six, they'll do a third. They are going to do three casualties on this unit. And now that they have moved, we can bring our heavy cavalry up. Now, we don't want to block the shot, but we'll bring them up to here, and we'll bring our light cavalry can move three inches, and they can move an additional... Uh, if they climb the hill now, they're gonna, that's gonna, this is a wooded hill, by the way, that's what those are, I'm just gonna move them, the whole hill is covered with woods. That brings them to right about there, they've moved, they have moved, and now the onus is on the orcs, what are you gonna do? The missile fire, side B conducts its move, these orcs are gonna hold fast. They're going to force these guys to earn two exhaustion markers. In fact, we're going to have exhaustion markers all over the place. It'll be two there. It'll be one here for now and one here for now. But by holding firm, these orcs have no exhaustion markers. And, well, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. These guys are happy. These guys are happy. They're eyeballing each other. We might want to bring these light infantry out to charge on the next turn, but that's... That'll have to be for next turn. Um, for this turn, we have to decide what are these, what are all these cavalry going to do? And we're going to try to chase off the light cavalry. We're going to come into contact here, which will earn two, and then we'll bring this guy around. He's got like nine inches. He can do that. So we're going to have a fight that's going to pit four, eight figures. Remember, each of these is four figures. It'll be eight light horse and two medium horse going up against ten light horse. Before we do melee, though, we have a second bow shot that's going to do two more casualties with a potential third. And it does. So now these guys have taken a total of six casualties. And these archers do not have anyone they can fire at. 
So now we go to melee, and the only melee we have. There is no charging here. We don't need to worry about that kind of morale stuff. What we've got for turn number one are eight light horse hitting on sixes. That's the yellow dice. We've got two medium horse hitting on fives. That's the white dice. The orcs are able to do one casualty altogether on the Broman light horse. Now the Broman have the opposite. It'll be light horse. They get one die for these two attacking the medium horse and eight dice attacking the light horse. So they're going to roll nine dice hitting on sixes. And they get a total of two casualties, one on the medium horse and one on the light horse. So we'll mark them as follows. Now we have to work out the morale bonus. Of course, we have one excess casualty on the part of the... Uh, we have to find out what happens to the orcs. They have an excess casualty they lost. There's a possibility they retreat. The light horse moved a total of nine inches. They still have an inch and a half of movement left. These guys... Well, let's just roll first for our excess, our bonus. So it's going to be a bonus of five to the morale of the Baromans. I, have, I do have a cheat sheet that walks you through this morale system. And it's going to be... We have... Ah, so it's going to be a bonus of five for the humans. We've got a total of 19 figures for the humans. And we've got 19 plus three, 22 for the orcs. So the orcs have a bonus of three. The humans have a bonus of five. Just because the orcs outnumber the humans. The humans are very easy. Each light horse gets a score of six. They've got 19, as we said. So 19 times six is going to be a hundred and nineteen. Wait. Six times nine is 56. 116. So 121 for the final score for the humans. The orcish forces are also going to be at a hundred... Here's one way to look at it. Here's the easy way to do it. The numbers and the morale scores for the light horse are the same, so that's a difference of zero. You have to add in three extra medium horse, which is a score of 24. Then you add the three bonus because they've got three extra dudes for a total score of 27. The humans have that bonus of 5 for a difference of 22, and the result is that the human forces pull back a half a move in good order. Now, a half a move for the light horse is 12 inches, except they are, we'll call it running downhill, but it's through the woods, so this first 4 inches is going to cost, this first 2 inches will cost them, oh, wait a minute. It's actually going to be three and a half. So that's five inches, and then they have to pull back another seven from the orcs. And they pull back almost to the edge of the table. If they had waited any longer and been driven back, it would not have gone well for them. They do earn another casualty. Now the question becomes, how far these guys moved an inch and a half, and then charging they moved another five inches, inches, so that's six and a half to get to there, seven and a half to get to where they are right now, medium horse have a charge of 12 inches, they can only move another four and a half inches, and because they are in the woods, it's only going to be in another two and a half, so the medium horse will pause right there. The light horse started off just about there, and they moved, call it four and a half, nine inches to get to there. It's going to cost them, uh, they can charge a total of 15 inches, 9. They're still in the woods, so they can get to basically about right there as well. I think maybe they were a little bit ahead of the, we'll bring them down to the base of the hill. Like so. And, and that's the, the danger of using mixed formations, is that these medium horse started further back. They're a little slower, so they're back 3 inches. And this is where... The turn ends. Kind of. I'm going to go ahead and give these guys... They moved, and they fought, so they're a little tired. And then, remember, this guy has the same amount of... These are our exhaustion markers. So we're done with the turn. 
We've done our melee resolution, including morale checks. Moving on to the next turn. And here you can see just how close these cavalry are to racing out of the battlefield. Remember, this whole battlefield is taking place in the White Heart, which is a light woods. So the fact that we've got a lot of terrain over here is not too surprising. What's surprising, more surprising, is all the, the cleared land on the other side of the battlefield. The Bromans get the advantage this time, and they have to charge. This is great for them because it's going to allow these guys to pivot and charge here, and that's going to cost them two more exhaustion. Uh, oh no, they can't charge. There's no morale checks here, but they do get the benefit of charging into the flank of that medium horse who was caught pursuing this escaped horse. We're also going to move this light cavalry up to this light cavalry, which forces the orcish light cavalry to make a... When you have light horse attacking light horse, these guys have to roll a five up or else they rout. Although, are they more than six inches away? They're pretty close to six inches exactly. On a one, two, or, on a one, two, or a three, the wolves will have a chance to counter charge. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, ba -ba. They do not, which means the wolves have to make a morale check and do not count as having charged. These guys do. Uh, and on a six, they do succeed in withstanding the charge. But this time, it's going to be a fair fight for the light horse. We'll get to melee. We got two melees over here. We'll get to that in a second. First, let's look at the eastern portion of the battlefield. The Bromans get to go first. They're going to pivot these guys 90 degrees which costs a half a move, and then we'll move them up to there. These archers now face a difficult choice. Do they continue to pound on these infantry, or do they hit the archers? I don't know. So we're going to use our die on a 1, 2, 3, on a 4, 5, 6. On a 1, 2, or a 3, they are going to hit the relatively lightly armored archers. This is their first fire. During movement, they cannot move, but they are able to do against lightly armored. They, you've got eight guys firing. They're going to do two casualties with the option of a third. They only do two on these archers. And they're going to repeat that process during the missile phase, but these guys will get to counter shoot. That leaves these boys open to charging like so. And we'll give them the benefit of choosing to drift off in this direction. I'm going to bring these guys into the center just to keep it neat and tidy. And this might be a more, this fight might be a little more fair than expected. I'm also going to bring this like infantry over here to charge. So man, this is when it really the rubber hits the road. We've got a tired Potentially tired. If they don't win in this first one, it might get ugly. Um, we're we're going to add the melee exhaustion and the melee exhaustion here. These guys will fight. After the fifth one, they're going to fight as one lighter. But why don't we go ahead and start with our melee. Oh, you can't even see it over there, can you? Let me move this up. So here's our light infantry versus light infantry. The... Romans are going to have six guys, and it'll be one die per guy in contact, which means it's six on six. Light versus light, you need to roll a six to do a casualty, and we're rolling for six dice for the Bromans, and I'll just roll them all at the same time. I'm going to grab four white dice for the orcs. Sixes are hit. Who gets the most sixes? It's a tie. One casualty to each. Then you have to work out the... Remember, every casualty matters because every casualty is another... I can't remember what the ratio is. Is it 50 in this case? 50 guys that are wiped from the campaign. The other thing is, from the perspective of morale now, you have a situation where you've got... There's no bonus for doing more casualties, but these guys all in the gate, you've got an extra four light foot... 
That means 16, and when you have a difference of 16 in the morale, the fight continues for another round. The butt will be rolling, and it'll be rolling for six and five again. Um, now we can do the big one down here, and what a big one it is. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve dice. Two, four, six, twelve dice. And since the Romans char Romans charged, we're going to roll for them first. They are, this is medium foot, heavy foot on heavy foot, hitting on sixes. They get a total of one, two, three, four casualties. That wipes out a full stand, and we'll go ahead and just pull one from the back. Full stand gone. For their part, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. The orcs also get to roll twelve dice. Twelve dice and twelve dice. This is feeling more like Dragon Rampant all the time. See how many casualties they get. They only get one, which means our bonus... Morale die is going to be, with a difference of three, it's going to be six times three, a bonus of 18 to the morale scores. Do the Bromans have more guys? Will these guys negate, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. They have an extra five guys. So they, the Bromans are going to start off with a morale bonus of 23. Then you have to add up, well, that five guys... The five medium foot are each going to contribute, or heavy foot are each going to contribute another five. So they have a bonus of 23 plus 25 is going to be a total of 50, 23 plus 25, 48. And on our morale chart, 48 means move back a full move in good order. I got to get these dice out of the way. Heavy foot have a full move of four and a half inches. Get the casualty out of there. These guys are going to move back four and a half inches to here. And the Bromans will only be able to pursue... How far did they move to make contact? Was it... They have six inches they can move all together. They were back... What was it, right about here? I keep forgetting we got to measure that. They were back right about here, let's say, four inches. They can pursue a total of two and a half inches. So bring all of the orcs back their full move in good order. Uh, like so, although it was five in the front, right? So something like, no, it was 12 in the front, something like that. Uh, with their casualty already gone. Now the Bromans pursue, and oh, look at that. They make contact with the archers, and now it's going to be a, we'll call it 2v2 fight. And it's, oh boy, it, now, you know, now that I look at this. So they have another, mm, oh, oh, boy, there's a lot of, like, knock-on random effects here that, that are going to happen. Light infantry. They fight another round of, around, of melee, and that's going to be a problem because they're going to be exhausted after this. But for now, not only do they interfere with the archers' free shot, but they do get to fight a two-on-two -two battle. The yellow dice will be for the uh, Bromans, and the white dice for the orcs. And light infantry only hit on fives. Heavy foot attacking light foot hit on fives as well, but unfortunately it's going to be zero on zero. However, because these guys are so badly overwhelmed, they are, the, the total score differential will lead to a surrender, and the Broman are going to have to peel off a unit to escort these guys back down south. In the meantime, and I mean south on the campaign map, because these archers, these orcish archers don't want none of it. They surrendered. That puts these guys in a bind. Do they try to rescue the archers, or do they try to drive these guys off? Bear in mind, these guys are fighting as a light foot. That could be a problem. That brings us to the battle of... Let's find out what happens to our medium cavalry first. We are going to have a total of... It's going to be heavy. It's going to be medium on medium. And it's going to be two dice versus four dice. And once again, when you've got medium cab horse on medium horse, it'll be hitting on sixes. The Bromans score one. 
The orcs score none. So this heavy cavalry, sorry, medium on medium. The medium cavalry is now, we get a bonus to our morale of three times one is a bonus of three. The medium horse, you've got uh, six extra guys. So that's nine. And then you've got six times the medium horse is eight. So six, you've got six extra. Six times eight is 48, plus the nine bonus is going to put you up into the 67. These guys have to retreat one full move. They move nine inches. They're going to have to retreat four and a half inches to here. These guys only moved three um, what was it? It was, they moved 90 degrees and they moved one inch. That means, and how far do medium, medium horse charge? They can charge 12 inches. So they've only burned four inches so far. They still have eight. They are going to be able to follow up with another round of combat. And again, it'll be two versus four hitting on sixes. And this time the... Orcish Cavalry. Oh, you know, the Orcish Cavalry does not get to retaliate because they got hit in the flank. And when they retreat one move, a retreat is... Oh, no, the backs are not to the enemy, so this is fine. We did everything okay. They could not have injured these guys, who now take one casualty. And the heavy horse are now, oh, are they exhausted? They've now fought two rounds of combat, as have these guys. So, yeah, uh, after this, they will count as light. But we have to look at the morale once again. It's going to be a bonus of D6 times 1. So a bonus of 6 might save these guys. With now a mere 7 to 2, bonus of 5, bonus of 1. Just based on numbers and casualties, the orcs are up by 1. However, you've got that 7 times 8 is 56. Wait, no, 7 times medium horse is 8. Oh, it's 7 times 8 is 50. Ooh, did I do that wrong? No, the retreat one move is still valid. It's 56, 55. These guys have to retreat one more move. They retreat off the map. So the medium horse for the orcs don't want none. And the medium horse for the Bromans will pursue to the end of their movement, which I think is right... We'll call it right about there. It kind of clears them out from here. But they are sitting on... One, two, three, four. They're going to be blown out here in a second if they don't get some rest. But we still have one more melee we got to do. And this melee is going to pit 10 dice against 10 dice. And move these dice out of the way and count them up. So we've got 10 dice. The chargers are the light cavalry. That's these guys. The Bromans get first attack hitting on sixes. They get a total of one hit. Oh, no, two hits. This one as well. Whoop. One, two hits. The orcs hit on sixes. And they get a, wow, they get a whopping five hits. One, two, three, four, five. So two hits to the orcs. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. We'll take off one of these. And when we calculate our morale, not only do the orcs get a uh, four times one, so they only get a bonus morale of four, but they outnumber their enemies by four. And then are these the same? Yeah. They outnumber by four, so they have a bonus of eight. And then they've got four more light cavalry. Light Cavalry have a morale factor of 6. So 
24, 29 forces the Broman Light Cavalry to move back a half a move in good order. That's going to push them back another six inches in good order. The Orcs do not pursue because they did not charge. They did not have that opportunity. And that puts the Bromans again right there. Backs are against the wall. Not looking good for the Bromans on this side of the board. That is the end of the turn. We can roll for initiative. And the Bromans get it again. So, we'll charge. That six inches represents... The light horse can charge. Oh, you know what? They only need to move back four and a half inches. That's what it was. So, so they actually have a little bit of room to play with. The four and a half inches, they're going to charge. They're going to force the orcs to make that morale check. They need a five or better. And a nine will do it. These guys are going to turn 90 degrees and charge into the backs. Now, they count as light cavalry because they are exhausted. I'm going to replace all of these with a green man we're so tired but they are going to get add some extra dice first thing we'll do is drag our prisoners 90 degrees and then about two and a half inches out of the way we're going to take them over to baron elizabeth who should know what to do with them and then we're going to charge our foot into our foot now this is light infantry they're going to fight as light infantry but their morale will still be as heavy foot and then that is all the movement that we have for this turn. Since the camera's set up here, let's go ahead and do this fight first. Once again, it will be 12 dice going up against 12 dice. The Bromans get the first attack. However, because they're fighting as light infantry, the Broman, light foot attacking heavy foot, they only get one die for every six guys. Or every two guys. So they're only going to get six dice looking for... Sixes. Light foot attacking heavy foot. One dice for two men. And they're still going to get two hits. That's not bad. Two hits to the Bromans. Grab a couple of casualty markers here. There you go, orcs. And this is where, this is one of the areas where things get confusing because really we only need, you've got eight guys here, you only need to peel two off. Why don't we do this? Since we only need to peel two guys off, let's pull a partial... Uh, a, a partial stand and leave it a little something like this. That's probably better because you need one guard for every five figures. I think that's much more reasonable. The Bromans did their two wounds. Now we're going to throw 12 dice and this is heavy foot attacking light foot hitting on fives. So the orcs are hitting on fives. And they're going to do a total of three hits, which will eliminate this stand. And because they did three hits, they're going to get the bonus of nine to their morale. We've got a neutral here, and we've got three neutral. The Bromans actually have two extra guys. So the score is nine to two in favor of the Bromans, but you have to add in that bonus morale for having a couple of extra heavy foot. The Bromans win by 19. The melee is going to continue for another round. And because this is, let's see, one, two, three, these guys might start getting kind of tired as well. Then we got to do this melee up here, which is going to be six Bromans versus four. These are all light, so they're all hitting on sixes. Call that a five. The only ones that hit are... The orcs do one wound to the Bromans. And they're going to do a bonus morale of three for that one. The Bromans have... It's seven to ten. Three extra, so it's a wash there. But the Bromans have one extra guy for a difference of five. That melee will also continue. And you know what occurs to me? We forgot to move these guys up to... Well, where would we move these guys? We could race them up to help over there. 
but they're exhausted. They're they're not going to be doing much. So we're going to rest them. Now that was easy. Now let's do some melee for the horses. This combat looks a little worse than it really is. You've got eight dice for the Bromans. Remember, the Bromans charged, and the orcs took it. So we're going to roll eight dice, and these guys are exhausted. It's going to be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve dice for the Bromans, all of which will be hitting on sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go. So twelve dice hitting on sixes. And the great part about this for the Bromans, so three hits is going to take off uh, one, two, three. And the great part about this is any casualties done by the two, four, six, eight, nine wolves will only affect the light cavalry. So we're going to have three and nine hitting on sixes. They're only going to get, we'll call that a six. They're going to get two, so that will eliminate another stand. And the morale differential will be, well, we got a bonus of a d6 times the casualty difference. So a difference of five. The These stands all cancel out. You've got two guys here versus five guys, sorry, seven guys back there. So the Bromans have a total bonus of uh, five guys. And they get an extra bonus of morale of five. So that's ten total. Then you have to factor in that you've got... Um, you've basically got two versus five. You've got two light horse. These three and these three cancel out. These three stands of light horses. So you've got two light horse and you've got seven medium horse in there. The medium horse do still get their morale bonus. The two stands of light horse will have a rating of 12. The seven stands of medium horse will have 56. The difference is 48. That means that the 48 is move back, full move in good order. The problem is these light horse can't move back in good order. We're going to fight another round of combat. They immediately get hit by another 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 dice. They might want to escape, but they're caught in the jaws of a trap. So 10 dice hitting on sixes, and it's going to be a really good roll for the Bromans. Five more deaths will add up to four, one, two, three, four, five. And the wolves now only get to roll two, eight dice in retaliation. And they're hitting on sixes. They're going to score one hit on the light cavalry. And now... You've got these two canceling out. You've got two. You've got nine extra. They did four extra wounds. So it's 16 plus the nine extra guys is 25. Plus you've got an excess of two light horse for 12. And that 56, which takes you up to a total differential of... Uh, what was that? 56 plus 12 is 69... Retreat one move, they can't, we have to fight another one, and the Bromans still get ten dice. Two, four, six, eight, ten, hitting on sixes. Can they match three dice? Man, they're rolling hot today, aren't they? So three more wounds, that's going to be one, two, three, and they only get to counterattack with six dice altogether. And they're going to get no casualties. So the three casualties times a d6, 15. Now they are outnumbered by... What was that? Now they're outnumbered six. These cancel. They're outnumbered by six, nine, 13. Plus the nine is 22. Six, 
6 times 6 is 36, 48, plus the 56, that's going to be 90. And that is going to be a score of route 100, back to the enemy, must rally. They still can't move because they're blocked by the enemy. And we got to fight another round of combat. And once again, these guys are going to swing in. It's going to be 10 dice. But because this is a fourth round of combat, these guys are fighting as... Well, we'll just... We'll just keep doing what we're doing and seeing what happens. Ten dice for the Bromans. They're only going to score one hit this time. Uh, but now it's only going to be four dice for the Orcs. For no hits. So the one hit gives a morale bonus of six points. And... Is that what that was? No, that was the one hit on these guys. Uh, they should only be rolling three dice in retaliation now. Um, three dice in retaliation, whatever it is, they've got five. Five, so that's eight. Fifteen plus twenty-seven. And then you've got the excess morale, so twenty-seven. To that add the fifty-six, you're up to sixty-eight. Then you've got the differential. These guys cancel. You've got an extra... Five, so 56, 68, plus five times six is 86. So they still are routing, and again, it's going to be 10 dice for the Romans hitting on sixes. They're going to do two more casualties, and this time the orcs are only going to get to retaliate with three dice. They do no casualties, and um, I think we're going to. Well, let's let's keep going. They are outnumbered badly enough that these last three guys, let's call that a surrender. We're going to peel them off like so, and that frees up a couple of units that will take this next turn to have to rest up. Moving on. I'm honestly not sure why I'm rolling for initiative here. The Bromans get it, which means, because the... Everybody here is locked in combat except for these guys, who are now going to be able to move up to there. They're well rested. That's going to earn them one fatigue. These guys are going to march off to the farm. And that'll be four and a half inches for them. And then we just have our regular battles that we've got. We've got a total of, we still have six dice for the Bromans rolling with the yellow dice. Versus four, this is our light on light. Only six hit. So we get one hit over here. And that means you've got a morale bonus of six, plus the fact that you've got four extra guys, morale bonus of ten, plus the fact that you've got four light infantry gives you a bonus of 16, 26. The results of that one at 26 are move back a half a move in good order. And the light infantry will be able to move back to here. The, these light infantry are going to pursue, and we're going to fight another round of combat. Why wouldn't you? That extra round of combat is... Um, these guys can move up to their charge distance, so they can pursue and pursue, and this time the answer is because you might take a casualty. And the bonus of morale is going to be five, but they're still outnumbered by... It's nine to six, they're outnumbered by three, so the orcs are up by two, except that because they're outnumbered by three, that's going to be a difference of ten, and now we stop. Then we have to do this combat, which is going to be medium on light. It's going to be six dice for the Bromans again. They're going to hit, they're going to get one casualty. And then it's going to be 12 dice for the Orcs. And if you notice that edit, I rolled too many dice. Hopefully I'll remember not to show you what that result was. Here's our Orcs, and oh look, it's pretty much the same. Uh, three casualties for the Orcs. One, two, three... For a bonus of two casualties, the Bromans are not doing so well. They have the exact same number of guys. So everything is a wash except for the three excess casualties 
means a difference of 12, and at 12, this melee will continue on the next turn. Because nobody retreated, that's the end of the turn, and all of the horses are now recovered. They have all rested. I'm going to move these guys off. So the, the light horse, actually the wolves, have been escorted off the board. If we come take a look at what's going to happen over here. These guys who just rested, let's roll for initiative. And because I think what's happening here is that the Bromans are hanging by a nail. They're exhausted. And we've got to move some support in. And the question is going to be, what's the fastest way to do that? We're going to bring these guys up the four and a half inches as usual. So these prisoners are now escorted into there. Then we're going to bring our, that's a quarter move. And they, oh, no, these guys are facing the cavalry now. The heavy cavalry can move a total of uh, nine inches. So if they turn around, that costs them about two, and they're going to be able to move to there. The light horse are going to race 12 inches. So that's one, and then a half, and then basically to right about there. And that's the movement for the cavalry as they race to try and reinforce this melee over here. The archers as well are going to move four and a half inches to here, and they're preparing to hit these guys in the flank. In fact, let's move them up like three inches, and then we'll spin them the 45 degrees so that they are prepared to do that. Now, they are going to be a little bit tired. But remember, the orcs are doing some pretty good damage here, and... There might not be enough humans left over to continue their, their attack, their incursion, into the Orcish lands. For this combat, it's going to be six dice hitting on sixes. No hits. Oh, I forgot to put a thing. So this will be... We're getting there. These guys might be too tired when the cavalry comes a calling. But they do get to roll 12 dice. And they're going to hit three times for a bonus of... Well, three... Which is doubled because we'll take off one and then two, three. They have three more guys, so that's six. And then you add the morale bonus for heavy foot, armored foot of, no, heavy foot, six times three, 23. That's going to force these guys back. We are into the move back a half a move in good order. So we'll move them back one inch, two inch, and then a little bit further. That's where the humans stop moving. And because it's only a half a move, the orcs have the option to follow up, and they're liking where this is going. They know they, their time is running out. They want to do as much damage as possible. Might as well hit them while you still have the advantage. And we fight another round of combat. Now, this time around, we're going to roll for the orcs first. Let me give myself a little bit of room to roll these bones, and the orcs are hitting on sixes. They're going to do one more casualty. And then the humans are going to roll, and they are also going to hit on sixes. But this time around... Oh, you know what? This is the last round. Both of these forces are now spent. I'm going to drop a green exhausted marker on both of them. Both of these guys now fight as light infantry. The one more casualty means a bonus of two. You've got four more guys, so a bonus of six. Four times six is 24, 28. That's going to force the Bromans back another half a move. And now, if the orcs fight, so there's our half move. And that was a half a move, so they follow up the other half of the move. This is the last time the orcs can follow up, regardless of what happens. But this time, it's going to be light on light, so everybody is rolling d6s and hitting on 6s. So 12 for the Bromans is 2, 4, 5, 6 hits. Good lord. So that's 1, 5, 6. What a great roll here at the end. The orcs, can they match it? No, they only get one casualty. That does remove a stand. But with the excess casualties, it's going to be 25 for the bonus. 
And then they've got one, here, we'll line it up just so you can see. They've got one extra guy. So they start at 26, plus the six is 23. That throws the orcs back a half a move. And they remain exhausted. So, the turn is now ended. We finished melee. We have to roll for initiative. And, oh look, we got another tie. The Bromans win this initiative. They want to go first. We're going to rest. We are going to open fire. Remember they have a 45 degree fire arc? These archers now are going to be able to shoot and do some damage against this unit of orcs. This unit of orcs is going to suffer. They are half shield. You've got six shooting at half shield. They're going to suffer two casualties regardless. So two more hits. They have to rest. It's the only way they're going to get out of this alive. Well, before we do that, though, this heavy cavalry is going to charge over on their second move. That's going to be two, eight, nine inches to get to there. Eight. Uh, quarter move is, uh, what is that, three inches, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So then the light cavalry are going to be right about there to wrap things up. We've done our shooting. We just have to do our one melee. Um, these guys did not move. They're not being contacted. So the orcs, everybody down here is now rested. And maybe the orcs should have left the field. But we didn't have any, we didn't have any call for that. So we're just going to do this combat up here, which will be our usual uh, four dice. It's going to be six yellow dice for the humans and four dice for the oh no we've only got five guys in con well no the three come off the back row it's still going to be six versus four looking for sixes three wounds one two three to the bromans to none to the orcs three excess casualties with a bonus of two is six you've got Nine versus three, you've got 12 already, and then you multiply the excess. Six times four, 25. That forces this light infantry to move back a half a move, which in the case of light infantry is two and a quarter inches. And we follow up, and we fight another round of combat. Now, I know everybody's exhausted here. This time it's gonna be six versus two. Hitting on sixes. A tie does one damage to each. So we will now call that four versus two. Uh, the difference is going to be... There's no, diff no bonus for morale for the winning the combat, but there are t six extra guys here. So six extra guys plus the light... The morale factor of light foot of four times six is 24, 28... Move back another half a move to here, and then follow up and fight another. But this time it will be four versus two. Everybody hits on sixes. The Bromans deliver another kill for a bonus of two. Plus they have five extra, so that's eight. And the five extra times four is 28. Forces these guys back another half a move and they are driven from the field of battle. So you have one figure of light infantry that has escaped the battle. We'll have to make a note of that for our next video. We have one light infantry and we have one, I think the medium horse fled the field of battle. But we do have some prisoners as well that we will track. There's one other thing I forgot. Because they didn't move, they fired on their movement and then they fired on this unit while they were resting, and they did another one, two wounds. So, that being the case, we're going to roll for initiative, and the Bromans get it. The light infantry has now successfully pursued their opponents off the field of battle. One thing I forgot, while these guys were resting, they took another bow shot, which does two more damage, like so. This next... 
role is going to be very important. If the Orcs win it, these guys will turn 90 degrees and race for off the battlefield. They're going to withdraw. They didn't get it, so they're going to have to deal with the fact that these guys are charging into melee. Their route of escape is blocked, and not only that, but they are going to get hit by these heavy horse who turn that costs one inch. Well, I guess they're going to go six and then turn here. This light horse can turn. These guys aren't going to move. They're going to do two more damage. The light horse is going to turn, they're going to move 6 inches. Now they can move a total of 12 inches, even if they don't. They'll turn and they'll move another, let's see, that was one, one that's a quarter of the, tw of the 12 is, they get another 2 inches of movement. So the horse are now closing in. And this is the last chance that the orcs are going to have before they really get hammered. It's going to be 12 dice on 12 dice. Three. Six. And these guys still have half a move for pursuit. Six dice. And it's medium on medium. Everybody hitting on sixes. The Bromans are going to score a total of two hits. One and two. And the Orcs are going to score a total of... We'll re-roll that one. Two, three hits. One, two, three. The Bromans might have been better off just holding their fire and letting these guys escape. With the excess of two casualties, the Orcs will get eight bonus points. However, the Orcs are outnumbered by five, six, so that bonus goes down to a negative two. And outnumbered by six medium foot, heavy foot, is going to be a difference of 28. They're going to fall back a half a move to there, and the Bromans are going to follow up with the other half of their movement to here and fight another round of combat. The Bromans will roll first, hitting on sixes. One, two hits for the Bromans. One, two casualties. And then the Orcs will return with a total of two hits. So that will be one, two hits. All right, the Bromans, uh, the Orcs are going to get a bonus to their morale score of, because they did uh, one more hit, I think, it, did they do one or two more hits? They're outnumbered by one, four altogether. Right, how does that work? These guys are awash. They're outnumbered by three here and three here. They're outnumbered by six. So that's a differential of 30. Plus the six they're outnumbered by, it's 36. That's going to put them into the, we're going to fall back another half a move, and the Bromans are done. They cannot follow up this turn. That is going to be the end of the turn. Melee is over. And then, oh, you know, I think I added two extra casualties there I shouldn't have. Uh, because the archers can't fire at these guys while they're in melee. Hmm. That might have made a big difference. Well, it's late. I'm a little bit tired. We're going to roll for initiative, and once again, this is the orcs' chance to escape. So the orcs now, if they change formation to column, they're going to have to... Uh, all right, here's, here's what I'm going to rule as the, as, as the game master. If they switch to column, that takes a full move. And then they're going to get hit in the flank, and they're going to get hurt pretty bad. Instead, what we'll do is we'll give them a 90-degree turn, and let's see where, where that puts them. It puts them in contact. So we're going to give them a sacrifice of these units, and these four guys are close enough to escape. So a total of 16 figures, I'll have to check my ratio, of the orcish figures managed to escape, along with the light infantry, and I think a little bit of cavalry. The rest of this combat is going to be fought out on the campaign scene. There are a lot of light infantry left for the Bromans. We'll take, we'll, we're going to stick a fork in it for today. We're done. But we'll be back next week 
We'll tally up all of our casualties. I'm gonna edit the video, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna double check, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, make a few rulings. I had a couple of extra casualties from bow fire that shouldn't have been applied there. And I think by way of compensating, we'll let these, uh, what is it? If the, the foot were, it was one to a hundred. So we have 400 orcs that have escaped into the wilds. It might, you know, they might have actually won this a little bit better, but I think that's pretty fair to say, look, we're going to allow some of these guys to escape and create a thorn in the side of the Bromans who are going to pursue, do some damage, rest and refit with Baron Elizabeth, and then decide whether they want to hold down this eastern side, fortify for a potential counterpunch by the great Latora Khan, or do they want to charge on up into the north and maybe hit Churger, lay siege to it, force the Khan over here, which will give the Bromans a numerical advantage over in the west. I don't know. We'll figure that out next week. Come on back. I'm praying for you.